originally I'm from Indiana, but tonight I hail from hilarious and delicious Kansai, Japan. And I am very, very honored to be here at Tokyo Nerd Night's Express Yourself edition. Yeah, and so I am here to talk about V-Day Osaka. Um, I and six rad ladies started V-Day Osaka about three years ago. Uh, V-Day is actually part of a larger global activist movement to end violence against women and girls. It was started by this woman right here. This is Eve Ensler. Eve Ensler is the creator of the award-winning play The Vagina Monologues, as well as a huge social activist for women's empowerment. Who here has heard of The Vagina Monologues before? Raise your hands. All right, excellent. And who here has seen a production of The Vagina Monologues? All right, not so many. That's OK. Excellent. <laughs> More people to get in. Ooh, OK. Um, all right. So uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Vagina Monologues, it is a play based on 200 interviews with women in which Eve Ensler asked these women about their vaginas. vaginas. That's exactly right. And so these interviews were consolidated into a little over a dozen plays. Uh, and I'm sorry. A, li a little over a dozen monologues, and the monologues range um, from one 70-some-year-old woman's account on her relationship with her own vagina uh, to a dominatrix experience being a dominatrix who loves vaginas. And so the, uh, the monologues range from really outrageous and hilarious to dark and um, pretty heartbreaking ones, as, far as well as reflective and inspirational monologues. Um, yeah, and Eve's goal, sorry. Eve's goal in, next slide, next slide, thank you, <laughs> uh, Eve's goal in uh, creating the vagina monologues was to address women's sexuality as well as the stigma behind rape and abuse. She found that after every performance, women were waiting to tell their own stories of survival, and so, this led Eve to realize that the vagina monologues could be more than a moving work of art on violence, but that the performances could actually be a mechanism to move people to act to end, of, end the violence. Hence, on Valentine's Day 1998, Eve, with a group of women in New York City, started, there we go, V-Day. Uh, so the V in V-Day st stands for Valentine, vagina, as, as well as victory. Uh, and their mission is quite simple. Um, their mission is that they demand that all violence against women and girls around the world end. And so in order to do that, she offers free use of the Vagina Monologue script to anyone across the world. Uh, and these, these groups have the opportunity to put on a performance of the Vagina Monologues. And so uh, the, the money raised at the Vagina Monologues then goes to charity to uh, help to end violence against women and girls. And so 90% of the profits raised at these events go to local organizations and projects where that play is taking place. And then the rest of the 10% goes to the Greater V-Day organization. Um, and they every year have a spotlight campaign. And past campaigns have included uh, women in prisons and detention centers, workplace violence, as well as women in conflict zones. Today, over 5,800 V-Day events are organized annually. And so you might be wondering if in this very, very dynamic and metropolitan city of Tokyo, if a V-Day Tokyo exists. Uh, and so, next please. There have in fact been V-Day Tokyo events in the past, including one in 2016 in which some of Japan's fiercest and active feminists performed, and so it was a really big production. But actually, at this very moment, there is not a V-Day Tokyo community. And so, I have to be completely honest, I came here today not only to talk about and mom brag about Osaka, V-Day Osaka, I also came here with a glimmer of hope that maybe one or some of you in the audience tonight might be slightly moved or inspired to make V-Day Tokyo a thing again, maybe. Okay, but I do realize that I just met you, and so I'm asking a lot of you already, and so before I get carried away, I'm going to go ahead and just jump into the story of how V-Day Vide Osaka came to be. All right, so... Okay, um, as for me, before organizing 
leading the Fide Osaka community. I had actually only seen the vagina monologues once as a college student. Um, I, of course, remember myself thinking, well, a play entirely about vaginas, that's so outrageous, but like outrageous in a really cool and liberal, progressive way. Uh, but I had no idea about the mission behind V-Day. Um, and that was until I came across this book, The Vagina Monologues. Uh, I found this on a free bookshelf, and I picked it up for some light reading. Sorry, next please. And uh, in this particular copy, there happen to be testimonials from past V-Day organizers. And these testimonials did what testimonials do, and I was inspired to make V-Day a thing in Osaka. Uh, of course, I had my doubts and hesitations. Uh, all the all the uh, testimonials in this book took place on American college campuses. I wasn't in America or on a college campus. Um, uh, I didn't know if people in Japan would be interested in coming to a play about vaginas. Was it even legal to have a play about vaginas go down here? Of course, you know, there were, there were limitations. Uh, but I did know that the first step was to recruit a team of badass feminists. And so, I want to pause my story really quickly and take a very quick survey. Who here thinks that all people, regardless of whether you're a woman or a man, deserve to be treated equally and with respect? Raise your hand. Is this a trick question? <laughs> <laughs> a room full of feminists. I am so happy. Excellent. Wonderful. Okay, I'm going to keep going now. Um, uh, so... I reached out to all the beautiful, badass, strong women that I knew, and all those ladies reached out to all the strong, beautiful, badass ladies that they knew, and in the end, we had a organizing team of seven rad ladies, and just like that, Vide Osaka was formed. From there, we met and messaged often, we collaborated and brainstormed, we delegated, we had a lot to do. First thing that we had to do was find a beneficiary organization that we would donate all our profits to no matter how small the amount ended up being. At this point, we had no idea what was gonna happen. And so uh, after some extensive kanji coding research, we found the perfect organization. And that organization is Ikuno Gakuen. Uh, Ikuno Gakuen is a Nonprofit, non governmental organization that works with the survivors of domestic violence. Their mission is to create a society free from violence and discrimination where each individual can be respected as a human being. They offer a variety of services, including um, emergency shelter, step house for longer term care, as well as telephone counseling. They also work to create networks for survivors. Um, and also spaces for those survivors to uh, help them on their recovery. And uh, these spaces are open to both the LGBT community and the foreign community as well. Uh, we feel very, very lucky to have found such a wonderful organization to work with in solidarity in the fight to end violence against women and girls. Uh, this seems like a good segue to get into some of the issues Japan currently faces when it comes to violence against women. And some of the things I'm going to talk about could be potentially triggering, and so if anyone needs to take a break at any time, please do so in whatever way is good for you. So, to begin with, Domestic violence is a huge issue in this country. According to a Gender Equality Bureau Office survey, one in four women experienced abuse by their spouse in 2015. However, a survey from the Cabinet Office reveals that only 2.2 of those subjected to spousal abuse actually contact and co consult with police. And of the reported abuses, this 2.2, only 10% result in arrests. And according to a report by the UN Office of Drugs and Crime published in 2014, Japan, as well as Hong Kong, have the highest rates of female homicide in the world at 52.9%. 22.9%. of all female homicide victims are victims of domestic violence. On average, a woman is killed by her intimate partner or ex-partner once every three days. 
And as far as unmarried women go, uh, protections are even more scarce. If a woman is subjected to rape or sexual assault by someone who is not her husband, the only legal protection she has is a 1950, 1957 Anti-Prostitution Act. And even when someone does have the courage to go to the police and report rape or sexual abuse, often they're treated with humiliation and the progress is very, very patchy. The victim is often treated as the guilty party instead of a victim. Most recently, in March of this year, there were four cases in which the common sense of male judges resulted in four men accused of sexual violence, walking away, scot-free, no conviction. And might I add, two of these cases involved incest. And this is in a country where the conviction rate is 99% for anyone other than a rapist, apparently. As far as the Japanese courts and legal system are concerned, uh, case of in, a, in a case of sexual assault, no only means no if the victim backs it with loud resistance and violence. These are horrifying realities. But the glimmer of hope is that there are a number of really amazing Japan-based organizations that are doing what they can to end this culture of violence, change legislation, and support survivors of violence. And we at Vide Osaka are doing our little part to help in this fight as well. Okay, so just to recap, badass organization, check. Amazing beneficiary organization, check. Uh, next up, getting the cast together. Via word of mouth and Facebook assistance, we were able to round out we were able to round up a team of 22 beautiful ladies from around the world. That's us. Uh, in addition, uh, we were, a as I mentioned earlier, well, oh, actually, I didn't mention this, but uh, one of our things that uh, we wanted to make sure was that when we put on this production, we wanted it to be accessible to all members of the community, They're not just English speakers. And so we were trying to figure out how best to do that. And so with the help of the former V-Day Tokyo team that I mentioned earlier, we, we were able to get a hold of a Japanese translation of the script, which was really awesome because now we could have a bilingual performance of the vagina monologues. And so we had some performances in Japanese, some in English, and then subtitles throughout the show. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, in getting the show ready, there were certainly moments of panic and stress. Uh, for example, we actually didn't have a venue blocked down until a little bit over a month before the show. <laughs> and then, um, of course, getting 22 women with really exciting lives together to perform, or to get, get these 22 ladies together to rehearse was nearly impossible, as you can imagine. And also, we'd never done it this before, so we didn't really know if we could we even be able to get 50 people to show up for a little passion project play. But at the same time, on so, so, so many occasions, things fell into place perfectly. And it honestly felt like there was a vagina goddess somewhere above us just shining her vagina light on us. And <laughs> it just, things fell into place so perfectly. Uh, I think one of the things that really moved and inspired us the most was the incredible amount of community support that we received. It seemed that everyone we talked to was on board and down to help in any way they could. And so we had people helping out with Photography, we had people helping out with videography, food, music, subtitles, making art, tech support, setup and cleanup, making the program, social media, and more and more, lots of more things. Uh, and so yeah, that was really cool. And so, uh, the night of the show was finally upon us. Let's, oh, sorry. Ah, there we go. That's us in front of the venue, getting ready. Here's us. This is Katie. She has all those stools for the audience on her scooter. <laughs> vagina monologues. That's us setting up. These are uh, vagina origamis. I folded like 500 of them before the show. Very stressful also. <laughs> uh, and so everything was in a crashing down and a fire pit of hell. But actually quite the opposite ended up happening. Oh. Okay. 
the cast blew the performance out of the water. It was so amazing, and the audience was so supportive and so energetic and so into it. That night, about 150 people showed up to our play. We didn't even know if we could get 50, so the fact that 150 people came was really, really exciting. We were able to raise 362,000 yen, and all our hard work had paid off. It was a huge success. Since then, we've actually been able to put on, this is our first year after performance, that's us being really excited that we pulled off the show. And since then, we put on two more super successful productions of the Vagina Monologues, and each year the production is unique and inspired in its own very special way. And so, oh, this is from our second year. We're having a little women's march at the beginning of our production. This is Sarah and Martha. They're doing vagina impressions. This is Brooke. She's being a badass. And oh, this is this is Emily. She's doing uh, aerobics for trans terminology. And this is Beverly. She's getting the audience involved in her her monologue. And yeah, here's us. Uh, and so. Since we've started the Vagina Monologues three years ago, we've actually been able to raise more than one million yen in the fight against ending violence against women and girls. And so we're really excited and proud about that. Uh, but of course, in addition to the money raised, I think most of us, if all, not all of us, would agree that um, the friendships and communities that we were able to develop as a result of putting on the event is something really precious and sacred and empowering. And so, on top of the money, we also feel like that is a really, really important reason why we do what we do. As one of our really, really wise members once put it, she said, nothing brings people together like vaginas. And I think it's really true. <laughs> All right. And so, yep, yeah, that's us being sweet in the community. And uh, you can go to the next one, please. Yep, yeah. that's after a second year. And then, that's us most recently, this past February. Oh. That was me, okay, sorry. sorry. <laughs> okay, and so the Vagina Monologues is actually not the only event that we organize. We also do a open mic night called Our Monologues, and it's a really, really cool event. People from the community can come and speak their truth and, yeah, have their voice be heard. And so this is a really special event. We also have our... This is not working very well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, our Riot Reads Book Club. And so we meet about every six weeks. And our aim with Riot Reads is to educate and expose ourselves to new perspectives and information in order to bring more equality, empowerment, and compassion into our communities. And so we read a lot of books about feminism, sexuality, race, class, all the fun stuff. And uh, we alternate between fiction and nonfiction. Uh, we also <laughs> we also put on a few really fun events too. This is our Osaka wide charity scavenger hunt. So we had like a list of like 50 things that you had to do on the scavenger hunt, and everyone donated 500 yen, and all that money went to Ikunogakuen. Uh, and we also next had um, feminist trivia night, and so this is also a charity event where you learn some stuff and also raise a little bit of money. Okay, so as far as what's on the docket for B Day Osaka at the present moment, um, in protest of the four verdicts that I mentioned earlier, in which four sexual assault cases end up verdict free, um, some of Japan's fiercest feminists, including Minori Hitahara and Akiko Matsuto, have come together and taken action against these gross injustices, and they've set up the flower demonstration movement. Yeah, uh, and so uh, survivor at these at these gatherings, these demonstrations, survivors are welcome to uh, speak out and share their story in a safe atmosphere. And participants are encouraged to come and hold flowers to show their support and solidarity. So these events have been going on every month since April. The verdicts were in March, and after that, they said, "No, we just can't just sit here. We got to do something." And so they've been organizing them, and they've been happening across Japan. Um, I think this past one, which was yesterday, happened in almost 
almost 10 locations across Japan. Uh, I was here in Tokyo, so I was able to go to the event yesterday at Tokyo Station, and it was super moving to be there. It was amazing to hear people speak out and share their story, and there were almost 200 people standing out in the rain to show their support and solidarity, and yeah, it was really powerful. And so these movements, these demonstrations are happening every month on the 11th. And so probably same location here in Tokyo, Tokyo Station, Gyoko Street, in front of the Imperial Palace, so on the 11th, seven o'clock. And, uh, oh, sorry, next. This is their website for more information. Uh, it's in Japanese, but if you add us on Facebook, we also put English information. So we've been encouraging people to go to these demonstrations. But yeah, check them out. Really, really, really good cause. Uh, and as far as Vide Osaka and our next Vagina Monologues present performance, um, we are still in the very, very initial stages of planning things out. And so as always, fingers crossed that the Vagina Goddess helps us out and <laughs> things go along as planned. Uh, and so, next. As mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, um, I am just reaching out to all of you. If there is someone here or if there is you know, a couple of you who are interested in organizing V-Day Tokyo, I, myself, and our V-Day Osaka community are a resource. So please, please, please feel free to reach out to us, ask us questions, ask, ask us for advice. Uh, even if you want to share like a cool event or a cool link, we would really appreciate that. But I also realized that organizing a community is a lot of work. And so if you're thinking, yeah, this sounds really cool, I'd love to connect with other people who are passionate about female empowerment, I just can't commit to organizing something, message us regardless, because um, I would firstly love to hear from you. And also, if there's a few of you who feel that way tonight, I would love to connect you guys with each other here in Tokyo. And so please reach out to me and my community. Um, here is our information. We are on Facebook and Instagram. I'm not keeping up with Instagram so great these days, but it's there. Uh, and then that's our email, videosaka at gmail.com. And my name is Margo. So yeah, feel free to message us at any time. And so um, to conclude, I hope that this presentation exposed your nerdy brains to two things. Number one, violence against women is a prevalent and ongoing issue, not just here in Japan, but all over the world. It's really essential that we all come to do that we all come together and do our little part to bring this violence to an end. Whether it's donating, volunteering, spreading awareness, or even showing up to events like flower demonstration or the vagina monologues. Let's do what we can to replace the violence in our communities with compassion, equality, and empowerment. The second message that I hope this presentation conveyed is that if you have a passion, an inspiration, a seed of an idea or a cause simmering in your heart, I really, really encourage you to pursue it. Vide Osaka has shown me how this tiny little seed of an idea can blossom into this gorgeous tree that's rooted in connecting and influencing more and more people each day. And as cheesy as it sounds, I really do think that if you believe in yourself, the universe makes way for you more often than not. And so uh, I want to thank you all so much for taking the time to listen. If you want to stay updated once again, please add us on these uh, social media panels. And um, of course, thank you so much to the organizers of Nerd Night for inviting Vide Osaka to be part of this awesome event. Thank you. Cheers, y'all. demonstrating our fabulous um, microphone device that we're going to be using tonight. This is meant to be thrown around. Yes, you can't throw it. We don't want to throw it at each other, not Gently. too far. Gently. Gently. Um, let's not injure ourselves. So whoever has a question, put their hand up, and Don will toss you the microphone. Please, no one that's out of the way. <laughs> Amanda, toss the chandelier. Can you do the honors? Sure. Of course. Who, who raised their hand? Sorry, I totally missed that. Oh, there. Where? Where? Oh, sorry. Oh, it's you. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Whoa, I just talked into this thing. <laughs> talking we hear. This is wild. That was amazing. Thank you so much. I absolutely applaud what you're doing and think that is so cool and hope that it comes to Tokyo and pledge any support that I can possibly do. I know a lot of old school feminists and people who started women's studies in Japan and all kinds of stuff, so definitely it's talk. Um, your presentation tonight was also, it seemed like it was focused on uh, the perspective of like a community organizer and an events producer and an arts person and stuff too, but also just from a general cultural studies perspective, yeah. I'll be really interested to hear about the content and the fact that you were working back and forth between Japanese and English and all of the like nomenclature issues there are between the languages and the lack of a good vocabulary for even talking about the vagina, the vulva, etc. Yeah. in Japanese. So I just wonder from like a general cultural studies perspective about the like the content of the actual performance. Like, yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about what that was like and what kind of stuff came out? It's really tricky to be honest because, you know, Eve Ensler is a North American woman and so a lot of these monologues, honestly, um, are probably of a North American perspective and so we were, we had to be a bit aware of that and so there are certain monologues where we try to incorporate like one of the monologues is like, what do you call your vagina? All these nicknames and so we did what we could to incorporate Japanese nicknames as well. There's also um, two monologues, like a happy fact and a sad fact, and so we did what we could to replace those with Japan-centered information. So one year was about like the stalking rates here in Japan, and um, another year we did uh, like um, uh, a spotlight on all like the big feminist faces in Japan. But to be honest, um, although we're doing some of the monologues, we usually do about a third of the monologues in Japanese, and everything's in subtitles. And so, you know, I, we feel like we're reaching out to people that way, but we do hope that in the future, I was actually just brainstorming with a friend, maybe creating a monologue that, or a few monologues that Japanese women can really relate to more. For example, like, going to the gynecologist as a Japanese woman, and the bridal check. I don't know if you guys know about the bridal check, but usually STD testing isn't really done. It's only done when you go in before you get married. And so, you know, maybe incorporating something more like that to get the Japanese community more involved. Thank you so much. Yeah. OK, Jordan, your job is to throw it all the way back there. So why don't we relay, relay the toss Here we go. Great. Um, that was a beautiful talk. Uh, Thank you. May, may the vagina God bless you. <laughs> uh, so so I'm, a, uh, I'm a member of a Facebook group called Tokyo Expat Network. Okay. Like the ten. And there was a post the other day, many a few months ago. There was this guy, uh, he's a foreigner, and he married this Japanese woman, and they had a kid. And uh, her, as well as her mother, kicked him out midnight after an argument at home and he couldn't go to police, he didn't know what to do, so he made this post looking for some advice or help. Yeah. So apparently there's the there's the mirror image, there is like the optical isoform of most of these issues on the other side of the community. Maybe it's less spoken, but it exists. Oh like yeah. So like the men's so, empowerment yeah. or something. Okay. So so how far are we from a P day or, or a dialogue, you know? Like <laughs> What are your personal thoughts about this as a human rights issue, not just... Well, I think the patriarchy is P-Day. <laughs> and so... <laughs> so I don't know if it's... I, my personal opinion is that because the patriarchy... And this, is, this is just me personally. So I don't know if I can vouch for the entire B-Day Osaka community. But um, because the patriarchy does exist, because, you know, men in the world tend to have more power and that's just how it is. Things like V-Day and the women's empowerment are really important and essential. Can I just point out the awesome use of, of the phrase optical isoform in your question, right? <laughs> yeah, you're dealing with some nerdy stuff here. <laughs> of course it's oh. all- You have to make two mops. Like two mops is okay. Nice catch. <laughs> okay. But you hinted at it in the talk, but um, oh, were there any legal issues? Like, like did any editing have to be done? Um, luckily, no, because I don't know if you guys know of um, Nokuden Nashiko. Do you know the lady who like yes. had yeah with the with the um the kayak? She um <laughs> had 
a yeah. She uh, got like she three a, printed in her vagina. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then she put the data on the internet. I think that was a big no no. And then the the cops went and arrested her. But and so knowing this, we were really worried. We're like, oh, is this sketchy? But we've had no issues whatsoever, and so that's been good. Yeah. Like, does no one Back have to the other <laughs> <laughs> Somebody oh, catch it! Oh, yeah. Nice! Who's <laughs> still dead? Thank you for a talk. Yeah, Hello, I am a uh, high school student from, to um, from Tokyo. Awesome. And I have a question about, like, um, as he talked about um, men's rights and, like, basic human rights. Um, this movement is, like, it's, for, it's basically for women, and um, I thought, like, he obviously needs um, men's support to uh, make this um, um, movement right. more powerful. How do you, how do you um, appeal to those people who are um, 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 more, uh, what's the more resistant to it? Not resistant, no. but like, how do you reach out for men who are uh, willing to support the, uh, the yeah. movement? So um, with the vagina monologues, uh, only female ident identifying people can perform in them, but as far as like helping out with the production itself, everyone is welcome. And so we did have a good number of men, some of our friends, some of the people from the community, who did help us out with a lot of things. Um, one of our biggest supporters is Austin. He did like all the subtitles. We had people helping out with photography and making food. And so, you know, making it clear that <laughs> Women's empowerment is for everyone, you know, when everyone is treated equally and res with respect, the, the entire community is going to become better for it. And so just making that clear, it's not against men in any way, it's together with each other. And so we try really hard not to be like anti-men. I don't think we really are, it's just, you know, it's empower these people who sometimes, you know, due to social norms are sometimes not where they should be in society. Thank you very much. No problem. Can I short jump this? No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, same question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hi. Um, hello? Uh, hi. Uh, thank you very much for the uh, interesting talk. I was like, personally really surprised by the high number of uh, homicides. Yeah, I me too. It's, um, yeah, it's a woman's problem, I think. Um, so, um, that sounds like a Japanese problem. So, like the dive box that came after the monologue, what would you say was really Japanese about it? Where you were maybe surprised about the culture, find surprising or like um, uh, different I, culturally? Well, I think, as far as like the reaction people had after putting on the monologues, um, uh, the biggest one I think was just this sense of a community where you could talk about these issues because you know feminism and social issues it's not neat it's not it's it's messy it's complicated you know um and so uh, it's impossible to be like a perfect feminist you know and a lot of times like i personally don't think i you know the word feminism itself is very, very loaded, and so there's a lot of things that there are to talk about, and sometimes you feel guilty for this thing, you feel bad for that thing, you know, you should do this thing, but you end up doing that thing. And so I think the best thing that came out of this community is having that space where people could talk about these things and feel really safe to talk about them because, you know, it can be really uncomfortable um, saying, ah, I do this thing, is that really unfeminist of me, or I do this thing. Um, uh, you know, does that make me this and that? And, uh, you know, to have that space for everyone, not just women. A lot, there's a lot of women in our community, but also for men to, you know, say, uh, I'm in this situation, what do you think? And uh, we really welcome men to be part of our community as well, and to, you know, have them there, even just listening to the conversation is really important. So I'd say just the community that's come out as a result is really great. We have time for one more, oh, I see too many hands. Uh, <laughs> I guess choose your favorite person with their hand up. Nepotism. Are we on? Yeah. Uh, oh, so thank you very much for your talk. Um, 
I think my question is slightly related. Sure. Uh, so obviously, I am not Japanese, I'm not a Japanese woman, but I was wondering, for people who don't go to see the, who don't have the chance to see the vagina monologues sure. in Japan, how can people as individuals, especially I think most people here are foreigners, how can we help our Japanese, our female Japanese friends to be empowered? Yeah. How can we do that as an individual? Yeah, of course. Um, I honestly think it's Go inviting your friends saying, hey, there's this flower demonstration happening on the 11th. Why don't we go to that together? Or saying, hey, I heard this presentation. Did you know that one in four women are abused by their spouse? Having these conversations and not necessarily saying like, oh, you're a Japanese woman. You're, you know, subjected to so much, but saying, yeah, like just having these conversations is so huge. When you have these conversations, it sparks something in your head and then these conversations kind of move to different places and then it kind of influences the actions you take and the choices you make and you know it's it's small it, it's tough because it's like you know as an American it's like go vote about it change legislation and that's not possible for us in this community but you know I've been here five years my mom's Japanese and so I do view Japan as a home and so I really do ask myself like what can I do to make a difference and I really think it's the little things for sure just having these conversations educating yourself and encouraging your friends to do the same thing Okay, we're gonna cut off the Q&A there, but like Margot said, please come and talk to her during Absolutely, the break. Absolutely, please do. Um, and let's give her a round of applause.